Nehemiah chapter number 4. We'll begin our reading, verse number 6. The Bible says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them to gather to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies, the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for being a good God. We're thankful to be able to come to the house of God again tonight. I pray, as Brother Josh has already prayed, Father, if there was someone here this morning lost without you, I pray wherever they are now, you would continue to touch their heartstrings, convict them, Lord, remove their sleep, remove their joy, remove their pleasure and their sin. God, I pray we'd see them saved before it's eternally too late. I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side. You'd bless their efforts. Lord, I pray for those little precious minds as they're hearing about Jesus tonight, that, Lord, the truths that they'll be taught will be lodged deep in their hearts and will help them all the days of their lives. I pray for those working with our teens. You'd bless their efforts as well. Help those uh, young people, the peer pressure they face. God, I pray you would bless their efforts. Now help us here tonight in the sanctuary. Lord, illuminate our minds, challenge our hearts, help us. And Lord, we'll bless you for what you do tonight. Thank you again for your goodness and your mercy. Have your will and way, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we ask these things. Amen and amen. Let me show you a few things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the harmony. Look with me again in verse number 6. The Bible says, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. There was harmony. There was unity. They were all on the same page. They realized a work needed to be accomplished, and it would not be accomplished unless they came together and did the work. Can I say where there is no unity, there will be no unction. We have to be in harmony. We have to be in agreement. We have to be in agreement uh, doctrinally, but also we have to be in agreement devotionally. Uh, Our uh, devotion ought to be for the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and we ought to seek to do something for Him. A lot of churches get in problems when you got some wanting to go one direction, some go another direction, and friends, that never works. We see the harmony. I want you to notice, though, the hindrance. Look with me again in verse 7. But it came to pass when Samballot, Tobiah, the Arabians, the Ammonites, the Ashdites, heard that the walls of Jerusalem being made up, the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth, uh, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. I mark her down, you make up your mind you're going to do something for the Lord, you're going to face opposition. You're going to face some hindrances. You make up your mind you're going to get up a half hour earlier and read the Bible before you go to work. You'll find out that half hour earlier is the most tired that you are throughout the day. You make up your mind you're going to start praying more. As soon as you get on your knees, you're going to find more opposition than you've ever faced. Uh, 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 It's just uh, the way it works. Anytime you want to do something for God, uh, uh, the devil don't like it. Uh, uh, I want to tell you something. A lot of things your flesh don't like. Uh, 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 We know the world don't like the things of the church. They say we're Uh, uh, non-essential. You're going to face some opposition when you want to do right. Uh, It's always the case. Now, the devil don't care about you coming to church. He just don't want you to do anything with what you hear. He wants you to stay just complacent, stay uh, in your little comfort zone, not tell anybody about Jesus, not try to do anything to win anybody to God. He just wants you to exist. And there was a hindrance, there was some opposition. Now what's amazing, we don't have time to go into this, but if you look at the Sam Ballot, Tobias, and then these, these groups of people, they didn't get along. 
but they chose to put aside their differences to hinder the Jews. All I say this, you know all them Arab nations over there, they never get along. They're always fighting. But they could come together to disrupt the unity of the Jews doing something for God. We see the harmony. We see the hindrance. Now, how did the Jews handle it? Well, we find that down here at verse number 9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. You know what do us some good? When opposition comes, not to start sucking our thumb and whining about it. Get on our knees and tell Jesus about it. First thing they did is they made prayer unto God, and then they used a little wisdom said, we'll just set a watch, and uh, we'll look out for them, but uh, we're going to continue on and do the work of God. What a blessing. They made up their mind. They was going to pray, and then do what they could, and expect God to do for them what they could not do for themselves. Mm -mm. Now listen, uh, there's a whole lot of Christians all tore up about this election thing. Mm -hmm. If you voted, you did what you can do. And all you can do is say, God, your will be done and go on and live your life. The rest of it's going to get settled when it gets settled. Why are you worried about all that? Hmm? Well, how does that really impact your day? Do you realize before inauguration day, Jesus could come? How are you impacting some lost person's day? Hmm? Jesus is still on the throne. Told y'all, if Biden gets in, we're just that much closer to heaven. So it's okay. It'll be all right. Uh, but we see how they handled it. But then, I know this crowd's Jews. They're Jews, but there's, they're going to start acting like Baptists right here. Notice how they begin to feel hopeless. Look with me in verse 10. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed, and there's much rubbish, so that we're not able to build the wall. Can I say this right now? Sam Ballot and Tobias won right here. Verse 6, they're ready to tackle the job. Verse 10, they're saying, we can't do it. It's just too great. I want to promise you something. Again, when you start doing something for God, there's going to be a hindrance. And if the opposition can make you think that you can't, the opposition wins. Y'all know our one rule around here. What is it? Do you remember what the second rule is? Can't say can't. Miss Annette's rule is don't say ain't. She hates that word. Every preacher comes through here knows it too. And she'll tell them how many times they said it. Hmm? She tells me, but I just ignore her. It just comes out. But listen, our second rule is we don't say can't. Because the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. But yet here they said, we're not able to build it. When you get a defeated attitude, you can't do anything for God. Hmm? Why do you think the devil will put so many negative people in your life? He wants to make you negative. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm interested in something, verse number 10. Look what it says. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. And here it is. And there is much rubbish. I'm preach for a few minutes tonight on this little thought. It's time to take trash out. Said there's much rubbish, trash. Brother Brian, go to work. We need to take trash out. He's a trash man. Huh? It's time to take trash out. Too many of God's people got too much rubbish in the way. You're not doing anything for God. You're sitting there saying, I got all this trash in the way. We can't do it. Look at all this. Uh, uh, some of you are spiritual hoarders. You just got too much trash in the way, and you can't do anything for God. Listen, uh, it don't matter really how much trash it is, uh, 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 but if that's all you see is trash, uh, guess what's going to control you? The trash. You just need to take trash out. You know? Your uh, spiritual house is starting to smell. You've collected too much trash, and it's starting to stink. Uh, 
and it's robbing you of the joy and the blessings of God. You just need to take the trash out. Mm -mm. I got to thinking about some of the trash or some of the rubbish in Christians' lives that are hindering them. Can I say, first of all, there's the rubbish of defeat. A defeated attitude is robbing you of the joy of the Lord. Hmm? Have you not read the Bible? Hmm? There's a plenty of times in the Bible things look bleak and then God steps in. Hmm? Uh, the whole situation changes when God shows up. Uh, 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 things begin to turn when God just steps in on the scene. Uh, but I've got good news. I've read the back of the book. We win. Uh, it don't matter what we're going through. The truth of the matter is we are going through it. Uh, uh, we're not just going to stay and let it uh, accumulate on us. We're going through it. Uh, and on the other side of this thing, uh, there's victory. Uh, on the other side of this thing, we win. Uh, on the other side of this thing, the devil's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Uh, and we'll be in the glory with the Lord forevermore, my dear friends. Uh, so many Christians walk around defeated. Hmm. Uh, you want to you wanna see the truth in Christians' lives? Open up and start singing that old hymn, Victory in Jesus, and look at their faces. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. Yeah, exactly. What a blessing. Huh? You know why? Why we don't sing that song? Because I don't want to make you lie in church. Hmm? You got too much defeat in your life. It's time to take the trash out. That defeat is overtaking you. You you play the part of the victim well. Why don't you start playing the part of a champion? Hmm? Because you are the winner in Christ. Defeat needs to be taken out. Hmm? I thought of some more rubbish that Christians live in. Hmm? Not only defeat, discouragement. Hmm? Somewhere along the line you bought Joe Osteen's book, and I appreciate the text today, Thad, you sorry no good. Hmm? There's some things not worth replying back to. All he does is to come to church and listen for them little things like I said this morning about buying Joe Osteen books so he can make a picture of one and send it to me. That's all he does. He never remembers anything but all that kind of stuff. But some of you have been listening to Joe so much and every day is a Friday that when you do face some opposition, all you get discouraged. You throw in the towel. Hmm? Discouragement is robbing you of the beauties and blessings of God. I read this quote, I thought it was pretty good. See, people get mm, defeated, and then they get discouraged, and they think that God is against them. Listen to this quote. God's not through with you. You're through with Him. When you live in discouragement, you're through with God. You're through with Him. When you live in the trash of discouragement, you are telling God that His promises are not good enough for you. It's time for you to take trash out. Now, now don't get me wrong. There are times when life is hard. There are times when, you know, not only hardships come, but just terrible things come. There's times when bitterness does land on your doorstep. There are times when, when just terrible things happen in your life. But God didn't do anything terrible to you. God's been good to you. God didn't leave you in that mess. God delivered you from that mess. And God's given you promises how to deal with that mess. Uh, and God's promised to be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, uh, even when that piles up on your doorstep, uh, you can find hope and strength and peace and love and joy in the midst of your mess. Wasn't that a blessing, Brother Darrell's attitude? He lost his job and was thanking God for it. 
because that job had been bringing him down. He knows God's got something better. Sounds to me like he took some trash out. Some of you need to do that. You need to get rid of that discouragement. You need to get rid of that defeat. I thought about some more trash people have got hanging around their house. Some people got a got the trash of doubt. Hmm? Doubt just piling up right in the middle of their living room. Hmm? You know when you got doubt you can't shout. You know when you got doubt all you'll do is pout. Hmm. Hmm. If you hang around doubt, won't be long and you'll get out. You need to take trash out. Get rid of that doubt. I read this quote. This quote is not for the faint of hearted. And if you're in a, a, a person that lives in doubt all the time, you need to listen to this quote. This preacher said this Doubt is nothing but practical infidelity. The person who doubts reveals his lack of trust in God and that he is trusting too much in self. You know how to take trash out? Get rid of the doubt? Quit looking at you. Start looking at Jesus. But when you're doubting, you're living in infidelity in your relationship with Christ. Hmm? Too much, too much tr- rubbish. Too much trash in your, in your house. Hmm? Now the sad thing is, it's one thing to have a little doubts, one thing to have a little discouragement, one thing to have a little defeat, but when you got all of it, you're a hoarder. Hmm? I thought some more trash people got. There's some people that got defilement in their household. Sin. Remember Brother Greg Phillips saying, you can't sin and win. Listen, we live in this flesh. This flesh fails the grace of God every day. The Apostle Paul, the great man that he was, said he had to die daily. He had to die out to sin every day. If he had to die out to sin, we have to die out to sin much more. But you don't have to live in sin. You've been given what it takes to overcome sin in the person of Christ and in the Holy Spirit living within you. He's given you the Word of God to overcome it. You don't have to live in sin. If we'll confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some of you just keep letting sin pile up all around you. Here's the problem, Brother Bob. You get too much trash in your life, and you get anxious, and you don't know how to get out from under it all. You just don't know where to start. And you let sin accumulate in your life, and you, you just don't know how you're going to get out of it. Hmm? You get out of it the same way you got in it. Walk away. Walk away from it. You walked into it, walk out of it. Hmm? Get to Jesus. Ask Him to help deliver you from your sin. Deliver you from your doubt. Deliver you from your discouragement, your defeat. He is well able, friend, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Mm, there's the trash of drifting. I'm convinced. People just don't get out of the will of God. They progress out of the will of God. You're not on fire for God one day and then all of a sudden turn the spigot off and out of the will of God the next day. You just start drifting. You start easing up. You just start reading your Bible every other day instead of every day. Before long, it's every fifth day. And before long, you don't read it at all. You drift that way. You just start praying every other day and so on and so forth. You just start missing Sunday night. And then you start missing Wednesday night. And then you start missing Sunday school. And you start missing Sunday morning. You drift. And that drifting's piling up in your life. You just need to take trash out. Then I thought about this. Trash a lot of people don't like to preach on. There's the trash of discord. You know, the Bible says one of the things that God hates is those that sow discord among the brethren. Hmm? Discord's what the devil seeks to do. But a lot of God's people start getting discord in their heart and in their life. 
See, what happens is they got too much trash in their life. They're miserable, and they want everybody else to be miserable. Why, why, Brother James, don't they, when they get all this stuff in their life and they get miserable, why don't they say, you know what, I'm tired of being miserable. I'm going to get right with God. No, they just want to make everybody else miserable, and they send you pictures of Joe Osteen on your phone, huh? That's what they do. So discord. Drive a wedge. Put people at odds against one another. Verse 10 is dealing with Judah. That's only one tribe of the 12 tribes. And Judah affects all the 11 other tribes. Just takes a little discord to hurt what God's are doing. Hmm? It's time to take trash out. I got to thinking about what causes the trash to be built up in our lives. I say, first of all, fatigue. Why do you think the Apostle Paul said not to be weary and well-doing? See, you can get wore out doing things for Jesus. That's why in, Matthew, in Mark chapter 6, Jesus told his disciples, come into a desert place and rest for a little while. That's why the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 4 says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. You need to rest. You can't burn the candle at both ends and expect it to end well. What happens is you get fatigued. And when you get tired, you can't fight off the enemy. It's like your immune system. Once it gets compromised, it has to work harder and harder and harder, and it can't fight it off. And so many of God's people are just wore out. You get wore out by the flesh. You get wore out by the world. You get wore out by the devil. You get wore out yourself, just putting too much on you. And trash begins to build with fatigue. And then what happens? Frustration sets in. Verse 10 where they said, we cannot build the wall. They're frustrated. There's nothing worse than wanting to do something, knowing you have to do something, and being frustrated, feeling like you can't get it done. You know why those hoarders... Anybody ever watch that show, Hoarders? They didn't just one day open the door and have all that mess in the house. And there's one people that hoard up stuff and they stack it up real nice and everything and make these little mazes to get through there. There are other people that are walking on the trash, which is on top of the trash, to get to the stove where they find rats running around. That is nasty. How did they get there? They didn't take the trash out. And everything they had became trash. And then they felt frustrated. Well, I might need some of that trash. You don't need to trash. Mm -mm. That's what's sad is when they realize they need help and folks come to help them, then they don't want to get rid of the, the trash. Well, I might need that. It's a broken light bulb. You ain't going to need it. Throw it out. Huh? I mean, that's, uh, how about their family members? How frustrated are they that they can't even come over and visit them? And then when they do come up, Clint, are you a hoarder? You're putting your head down. I was worried about you there for a minute. I'm thinking, oh, no. No wonder he's never invited me to his house, huh? <laughs> but their family members are frustrated. They're there to help them, and they want their, their quality of life to be better. But hey, until they themselves want the help, you can't help them. Amen. And my dear friends, until you get sick of the trash, you can't, nobody can help you. You get frustrated. Fatigue sets in. Frustration sets in. And can I say some? can't get rid of the trash because they just feel like a failure. They feel being defeated is the price they have to pay because they're a failure. You see, I got news for you. The devil will tell you he's a, that, you know, that you're a loser. He's the accuser of the brethren, and he'll tell you you're a loser, you're a failure, you can't ever do anything for God. You just got to go back to John chapter 8 and realize he's a liar and the father of it. Quit listening to the devil. Start listening to Jesus. 
Say, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure. Well, get to Jesus and He'll make you a winner. Amen. Hmm? He don't fail. Amen. And I read I'm in Him and He's in me. So I don't have to fail. I can't overcome. And you can too. And then I thought about this. Trash builds in people's lives because of fear. Look down there in verse 14. Look what the Bible says. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Why did they have the trash there? They were afraid of the enemy. And see, there's elements of fear that causes you to keep trash hanging around your life. There's an old proverb that speaks volumes. Fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. If I get rid of this trash, then it's going to cost me so much, I'll never recoup. What you don't see is anytime you get rid of something bad, God replaces it with something good. You know, there's enough information on the Internet, Brother Brian, where everybody in America could be a millionaire if they want to be. They'll tell you how to be a millionaire in a short period of time. But fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. In order to become a millionaire, you're going to have to invest a little bit, and you're afraid if you lose that little bit, it's going to ruin the rest of everything else you got. So you won't become a millionaire because you're afraid of giving up that little bit, whatever that little bit is. Fear of loss is greater than fear of gain. There are people in abusive relationships. Most women aren't like you. You know, a man lays hands on you, you're going to jack his jaw. I know that about you. <laughs> I've known you 20 years. I remember when you used to drive that dump truck and you'd shake people's hand and rip their arm out of their sockets. <laughs> Boom! That's why I used to avoid you. Stay away from that woman. She'll hurt you. Uh, but a lot of ladies that are in abusive relationships stay in that abusive relationship because they're afraid they're never going to get anything any better. And they listen to that sorry punk tell them that they're nothing, that they're not pretty, no one else is going to love you, and they put up with the abuse because they're afraid of gaining something better. And fear will keep you messed up and trash in your life. Let me give you this, and we'll be done. Let me give you how you can remove the trash. Three simple things in this text of how you can remove the trash. And I say, first of all, removing the trash is going to take reorganizing. Look at verse 13. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher, higher places I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Nehemiah had a plan, and he started reorganizing people and positioning them in the right places so that the enemy could not prevail. Can I say, if you're going to take the trash out, you need to reorganize some things. Listen, taking trash out's work, especially if you've got a bunch of it. But you need to have a plan. And you need to reorganize and realize you don't need the trash, I'm going to get rid of the trash. Can I say it starts with getting to Jesus and asking Jesus to help you. And then when Jesus starts showing you things in your life you don't need, just get rid of it uh, and reorganize your life for the honor and glory of God. It takes reorganizing. Can I say secondly, it takes remembering. Look with me again in verse number 14. We last read there that Nehemiah said, Be not ye afraid of them. Now look at the next part. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. You need to remember how good God is. You need to remember where He brought you from. You need to remember how many times He's blessed you, how many times He's helped you, how many times you've overcome in Him. Remember the promises. Remember how He parted the Red Sea. Remember He showed up in the lion's den. Remember that He showed up in the fiery furnace. Remember that every time God's people were in an impossible situation, God showed up, kicked open the door, and made a way, my dear friends. You need to remember how good God is. Because when you get to looking at the trash, it's too big of a job. You get to looking at God, uh, at God and you realize there's not enough trash. He's a good God. You need to reorganize. You need to remember. 
But if you're going to get rid of the trash, you need to resist. Look what it says again in verse 14. And fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. The Bible says resist the devil, he'll flee from you. When you feel doubt, when you feel discouragement, when you feel defeat welling up in your life, uh, you resist the devil. The Bible says draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You just need to start headed toward Jesus and don't stop till you run into him. Every step you take towards him, he's taking a step towards you. And friend, uh, 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 just run to Jesus uh, and quit listening to the devil. And you'll find victory awaits. Some of you need to take trash out. You got so many things in your life that is grieving the Holy Ghost from doing something in your life. You got so many things hindering you and holding you back. And you're listening to the wrong voices. You need to listen to God and realize that I don't need this trash. This trash is killing my walk with Jesus. This trash is killing my excitement for the Lord. This trash is causing me all kinds of anxiety that I don't need. And so you just need to get this altar tonight and say, Lord, help me get rid of this trash. Mm -mm. You'll never get rid of the trash till you recognize that it is trash. And here's a good barometer. Is it something you're, wor you're willing to take to heaven with you? Because if it's not, you don't need it, friend. It's trash. Hmm? Only precious things get to go to heaven. There's no trash there. But Brian, you're going to be out of a job in heaven. They're going to have to give you another one. Hmm? Uh, so how about it tonight? You tired of the trash? You tired of living defeated and discouraged? You tired of letting the outward influences affect you? Aren't, aren't, don't you miss the sweet fellowship of Jesus in your life? Why don't you do something about it tonight? Why don't tonight be your night? You're going to take the trash out. You're going to get back to Jesus. Let Jesus impact your life. Have a better outlook. Have a better day. Just have a better life. Can I say, there's nothing like a clean house. I have been... I shouldn't tell this, but I'm going to. First church I was pastored, I was invited over to a family's house. They'd lost a loved one. You go to pay your respects, and they want to feed you. And I get to looking at how nasty their house was, and I did not have an appetite. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know what a curio cabinet is? One of them little cabinets you put all them whatnots in, all them little things? They had a curio cabinet that had baloney stuck on the inside of it. Been there for generations, had hair on it. And they're offering me a bologna sandwich. No, thank you. Y'all think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I'd call their name. But here's the thing. When you're in a filthy situation, it affects your appetite. But if you're in a clean situation, hmm, it's a whole different thing. The atmosphere affects your appetite. See, when you've got trash in your life, you can't feast on the good things of God. But when you get a clean atmosphere, you can't wait to sit down at His table. Huh? There are restaurants I don't go to because they're filthy. Huh? Over here, y'all go over here and eat the Fazoli's. There was, a, there was a time when there was human waste in the bathroom in there. And we took the kids there, and there was human waste on the walls of the bathroom. We, I've not been in Fazoli's since. So well, they cleaned it. Not good enough for me. Huh? Huh? There are just some things that nasty and me don't get along. I'm trying to help you with something. It affects your appetite. So why don't you get rid of the filth tonight, the trash, and let it affect your appetite for the things of God. Brother Phil got up here and was talking about just spending time with Jesus, and Jesus shows up to your house. When was the last time that happened with you? Huh? you got to have an appetite for Jesus if you're going to feast on Jesus. I wonder tonight, you tired of the trash? It's time to take trash out. And then start enjoying the goodness of God. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. Maybe tonight you just need to come to the altar and take the trash out. Maybe tonight you need to just come and ask the Lord to help you with something. 
maybe tonight you just need to come and thank the Lord for how good he's been. I don't know. But I know one thing. He's coming. And I don't want any trash in my life when he shows up. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, that tribe of Judah, all they could see was the rubbish. They said, we will not build the wall. Of course, Lord, we read on, we see the wall got built. Lord, folks need to get their eyes off their trash, get rid of the trash, and they can do something for God. So help folks now. Lord, speak to hearts. You know what's needed in every life. And God, we pray that folks would just do business with the Lord tonight. God, if there's anybody here tonight unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. God, do a work, and we'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.